Welcome to the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, all about living a creative, intentional life. I'm your host, Kristen, and I like to chat about quilting, sometimes knitting, what I'm reading and watching, and a little bit about self-care, productivity, and keeping a cozy, organized home. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so grab yours and let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 89. Welcome, friends. It's good to be back. What do you have in your hand? I should be drinking iced tea but I'm actually not drinking iced tea today because I want to talk to you about a tea I talked about uh, a few episodes ago called Zest Tea, Z-E-S-T-T-E-A. And they are a um, high caffeinated tea. And when I say highly caffeinated, I just mean they have about the same amount of caffeine as coffee. So if you're not a coffee drinker, um, if it bothers your stomach or for whatever reason, but you have need of a little more caffeine, the morning, got a long drive, a little afternoon pick-me-up. It's um, a wonderful alternative. So they reached out to me and sent me some samples. I talked about them, I think, the episode before last. And that day, I was drinking the Blue Lady, which was absolutely delicious. It is black tea, orange, lemon, and hibiscus. Um, it is, it's wonderful. Today, I'm drinking Superberry Samba, <laughs> which... Um, it's just got it's got some green tea and green tea extract, passion flower, um, safflower petals, all kinds of wonderful things, and it is also absolutely delicious. And I'm bringing them up again. Well, number one, I am um, drinking it. I always like to talk about my tea when I remember. But they have offered to do a giveaway to two lucky listeners. So um, and they will send you apparently the same little sample pack that they sent me, which was not so little. It had this um, blue lady, a whole um, array of different ones like the, like the super berry, and then even some of the sparkling tea cans, which um, I actually... Um, drank a couple, but then left with my college-age son, and they got him through finals. <laughs> so um, so pop on over to the show notes at kristenesser.com for this episode, and I will have a raffle copter giveaway, and um, two lucky people will win. So super exciting about that. So um, I should have tried putting this over ice. That would have been really good, too, because it's a little bit warm here today in Southern California. So here we are in mid-June, and um, it has been uh, kind of a crazy, crazy couple of weeks. I actually wanted to podcast last week, but a couple things happened. One, um, my husband's back went out on him, which relatively incapacitated him. So that changed um, the course of how things went, including... Um, so then I needed to drive down to San Diego to go help my son move out of his dorm at UC San Diego. And then, so that was like on a Tuesday. And then on Friday, I headed back down to San Diego where my daughter had her redo of her graduation, also at UC San Diego. We're a very UC San Diego centric family here. All three kids either went or are going there, but she got her 2020 um, graduation redo. So that was very exciting and fun and, um, was able to take the kids out for a nice dinner afterwards. And then we got up in the morning and did the same thing again for my son who graduated, finished liter actually in December, but um, had his 2022 graduation the next day. And then we walked all over campus and took some fun um, photos in their graduation gowns because I did take pictures of Chloe. She had gotten a, um, like a cap and a tassel. So I did some, um, during lockdown, did some photos of her, um, for her graduation announcements, but we never had the full robe and, and stole and all that kind of stuff. So we did some pictures, um, by themselves and together. And it was very funny. The looks I was getting from people, um, who I'm pretty sure, thought that they were twins with their curly hair. <laughs> and so that was just, it was kind of funny. But um, so yeah, my husband actually missed that those graduations. Luckily, this day and age, things are live streamed. But yeah, there was no way he could actually have, have walked that far. He's in much better shape now. But it really made last week take on a whole other... Um, yeah, whole thing. You don't really appreciate what your spouse does around the house until they stop doing it. <laughs> And man, and he's a very helpful, very helpful husband, but man, it was, um, there was a lot to get done. So, um, so we're through that and it was fun. And now we have two out of three kids, um, with official, officially been through graduation. So that was really nice. Um, I was then 
when I drove back on Saturday after a pretty intense two days, I was supposed to on Sunday get back in the car and drive myself to Las Vegas, which is about six hours away for a business trip. And um, I ended up canceling out of that. And I could not have been more glad that I did that. I was so wiped out the next day. Um, so, so that was good. And now basically, I'm just you know, probably like a lot of you, I'm trying to find the the rhythm of summer, even though, um, you know, my work doesn't really change seasonally or anything. The weather changes, the light changes. I've got a kid home from college now, and I'm just kind of trying to find um, what do I want this summer to be? And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more at the end uh, in the last segment, segment of the podcast. Before we head into the quilting segment, I'd like to thank the Fat Quarter Shop for being such a wonderful sponsor of the podcast. The Fat Quarter Shop is a one-stop show for quilting fabrics and supplies for quilters around the world. They stock quilt shop quality fabrics, pre-cuts, quilt kits, patterns, notions, and even cross-stitch supplies, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. So I wanted to talk to you today about the Christmas time mystery quilt along. I am all in on this one. So this is a free pattern that they will release, um, you know, a week at a time. I'm not sure they have a, a start date. I, I believe it will be in July. Um, and you can just follow along and, and make the pattern for um, the block for each week there. So they, you can use whatever fabric you want. If you want to work from stash, that's fine. If you want to buy your own Christmas um, fabric, that's fine. But they have kits and they are featuring this new fabric line called Christmas Stitched by Fig Tree Quilts. And it's absolutely gorgeous. So I am totally in on this one. I'm going to be sewing along. I will be using the line Merry Making by Gingerbur for Moda and it is a, a delight. It's got your greens and your reds of course but it's also got these blues and whites with metallic silver accents and just go check it out it's absolutely beautiful. So I'll put a link in the show notes to the um, the information on the Fat Quarter Shop blog and um, I hope that you'll join me. All right, let's talk quilting. So I've already mentioned that I'm gonna I'm, I'm all set for the the Christmas mystery quilt. I've never have I, I've done Christmas quilts before, but this is um it's more wall hanging size, so that will be fun. And the other thing, I'm kind of all in on the quilt alongs right now because you know what? There's something about a quilt along that kind of gets me in the sewing room to do things when I'm feeling perhaps a little uninspired. So I mentioned last episode that I was going to do the Great Granny Squared quilt along, also hosted by the Fat Quarter Shop. And um, I am officially now two weeks behind on that. <laughs> you basically are supposed to do two blocks a week. And so the reason I'm behind on that is because I got obsessed with the cross stitch, cross stitch version. So on the quilted version, um, I've, I got the book. The book has been around for a while. You can get it um, lots of places, Fat Quarter Shop, Amazon, whatever. And um, she has instructions on a uh, really good instructions on how to do her version of the quilt which has these, these sort of economy block borders you end up with a lot of leftover squares and she has table runners and quilts and pillows that you can use those scraps on so it's very efficient so i am using a fat quarter bundle from my stash called sweet prairie by um down grapevine lane that i saw on the selvage is from 2017 so i've had it for five years as a matter of fact as i was ironing it yesterday um, I feel like the edges are a little bit faded. I just, I had it on a shelf for the, you know, for till very recently. So I, I kind of, it, it'll be fine all in the quilt. It won't matter. But I was like, wow, you got to be careful how you store things long term like this. So um, what I did yesterday, I felt like I wanted to be able to tell you I'd started this quilt. So thank you for your accountability. But I was went to go cut it and I was like okay this stuff has been folded for five years it really needs to be ironed so I just spent um, a very pleasurable 20 minutes before I started dinner listening to an audiobook and just ironing the whole um, little that quarter bundle and then after dinner I went in and just cut um, two and a half inch three two and a half inch strips from each um, part of the uh, you know from each what's the word each fabric piece <laughs> And, um, and then I'm going to, today, I'll cut those into little um, two and a half inch squares and then just start laying stuff out. So I just thought, I'm going into this by the seat of my pants, no plans of, of how I'm going to put together the granny square. So basically, it is one, two, three, four, four rounds on a, on a granny square. This is a great granny square. So I think it's, I think that the way it, 
you're supposed to think of it as the middle is the child, then there's the mother is the next round, then the granny, and then the great granny. So that's why this is, or great grannies, because it's four generations instead of the normal granny square, which is three generations. Three generations. So, um, yeah, so I just cut enough that I could just play around with it. And you just basically want to have some contrast between, um, you know, each round. So I'm just going to just gonna play around with that. And if I can knock out four blocks this weekend, I'll be officially all caught up, which that doesn't seem too hard. So I, um, I'm curious if you guys are doing this. I feel like there's a lot of people doing this. It's just fun. It's a great way to use up stash or, I mean, especially if you've got any fat quarter bundles that like me that I just didn't know what I was going to do with. I'm even using some stash background fabric. A while back, I bought like five yards of Motabella 98 and Motabella 97. And I can never remember which is which, but I think that 98 is very white and 97 is just very slightly off white. And I tend to like the one that's slightly off-white better. I think it blends with most things. Same thing of, um, it's a similar color to Kona Snow, which is, which you just think is white until you realize it's very slightly off-white. But I had five yards of the, the whiter stuff, and I spent a lot of time standing outside in the sun deciding if I could use that. And, and perhaps 97 would work a little bit better, the little bit off-white, but I'm using the 90. I'm going entirely from stash here. And so um, I think this will be fun. It's going to be mindless sewing. Once you, you, um, you know, I'll take out my design wall and I'll lay out probably maybe four blocks at a time. And then it's mindless chain piecing, which I'm all about. So I'm, I am excited about that. But I decided, I don't even know how I got into this. Um, but, you know, they're advertising that it's, you can do the quilting version, crossic version, or the um, crochet version. My friend Minky Kim, um, she said, I, let's do the crochet one together. And I was like, no, that's like the only one I'm not doing. I'm not a crocheter. Um, she's like knocking it out of the park on her. She's got some really cool colors going on on her. So you should check that out. But I decided, you know what, I'm going to try this cross stitch thing. I probably cross stitched a little bit when I was a young teenager or something. You know, my mom was very crafty and I did a lot of crafty things. I don't remember much. I mean, I, there's a sampler in my dad's bathroom <laughs> that I think that I made in high school. Um, but so I decided I was going to try this, but I didn't really know where to start. And I've you know, my daughter, she did a little cute cross stitch ornament and she just, just dives in. She doesn't care. I'll just do it my way. I need the instructions. So, um, fat quarter shop to the rescue again, they have, you know, they have a great YouTube channel, but they also have what they call a floss tube channel, which is a whole floss tube is like a whole cross stitch sub YouTube culture. <laughs> I don't know, but they have a, um, a floss tube channel. I'll put a link in the show notes. And it, I went directly to playlists and they have something called cross stitch university where they have a free pattern and, um, uh, Kimberly Jolly, who owns a fat quarter shop, she just goes through it with you. She is such a treasure. She is an amazing cross stitcher and quilter, and she is a great teacher and she, she just has such a great on camera presence. So I just, even before I bought anything, I just sat there and watched the first few videos and learned a whole lot about, um, you know, the best way to separate your floss, um, ways to anchor your stitches. I learned this thing called the loop method, which I'm all about. So which doesn't leave any kind of a knot on the back. I mean, it's funny, the very first day after I started cross-stitching that night, I remember being obsessed with knitting and having knitting dreams. So I'm, now I'm having cross-stitching dreams where I'm thinking to myself, there has to be a way to keep your needle on the top side of, of the fabric when you're cross-stitching. So when you hand sew, and I, I remember very specifically talking about this when I did my how to hand sew a face mask video, um, it's so inefficient to poke your needle down and then from the bottom try to come back up because you're just poking all over the place till you find the right where you want to come up right so when I teach um, hand piecing you just you keep your needle on the top all the time and you just go down and up down and up so you immediately come back up and that's your stitch and you never have to poke in from the bottom and that's what you're doing in cross stitches you go down and then you're poking around trying to find and you know you get pretty good at it but there is something called the sewing method for cross stitch that um, is the same way where you just you go down and up you stay on the top side and I thought and it's faster because you're really doing 
what would be two stitches at the same time. And um, so I tried that for a while. The problem is it's, it's, a little, it's a little hard to wrap your brain around it because as you go down and up, you're actually going up and down in a hole that, is, um, that are parallel to each other. But because of the way this all works, that's creating a stitch that's across. And so, and I got the hang of it. If I just have to do one big long line, I'm all about that. But if I've got to be moving around up and down to follow, then I'm just, I get so confused about where things should go. So I'm sure you figure it out um, as if you do it more. So I don't know if I'm a convert to that yet. But I learned a few things about myself. Not surprisingly, I don't like to use a hoop. I, I have embroidery hoops and I started with that, got rid of that immediately. I also don't hand quilt with a hoop. Um, I, can, I just can keep enough tension. Also, if you're doing the sewing method, you do need it to be looser. Um, so I don't like to use a hoop. When I did buy supplies, I bought, what's it? So you can use Ada cloth, which is a little bit stiffer. It's what I'm looking right now at my um, my project bags, which are made of Ada cloth. These, these I talked about them last episode, these fat quarter shop bags, project bags. Um, so it's kind of almost, it's, I want to say it's almost plasticky, but the holes are very obvious, but good cross stitchers. <laughs> so I'm using like a 14 count, it's called Ada, A-I-D-A. Um, but you can use like linen or even weave fabric, which is much tighter. Um, and then you, you don't go in every hole, you kind of skip a hole. And so when I was looking at the project list for the free pattern for the great granny squared, um, cross stitch pattern, I was like, okay, I'm going to get, I can do that. I'm, you know, I can sew, I'm going to get the 25 count Lugana fabric. And as soon as it came, I looked at it, I'm like, nope, not doing that. That seems rather advanced. And I poked around in my sewing room and found um, a scrap of 14 count Lugana. And I was just going to do one granny square. The, the, the pattern that they give you, um, you can, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but they show you one, or you can do just like a series of four. I'm like, I'm just gonna do one and see if I like this. Well, it turns out I kind of loved it. And so now I'm working on the little series of four. Um, and I saw a live stream the other day where they're going to show, um, not that we would need instructions on this for us between us, but to turn those little, um, little granny square cross stitch things into pin cushions by sewing them, which would be super cute. So anyways, um, so I've learned that I need some practice <laughs> on the um, on the easier to stitch on Ada cloth. So I'm totally having a blast with that. Now, the funny thing about me is the reason I actually, this is going to sound like a non sequitur, the reason I started knitting is because I wanted some sort of handwork and I liked embroidery, but I didn't know what I was going to do with a bunch of embroidered things in my life. Like that's, it's kind of like not my aesthetic. It's not my vibe to have little embroidered things everywhere. Um, of course, I never thought that I would have, I, w I didn't think that having quilted wall hangings was my thing. And actually it turns out in my sewing room, it kind of is my thing. But, and that's how I kind of feel about cross stitch. It's like, it's so fun to do. Um, and it's, what's, what I like about it is that it's so easy it's like it's so easy to just pick it up and do it during when you're watching tv or pick it up and go do it outside it's like knitting but sometimes with knitting sometimes it's really mindless and then that's great but it can also get boring and sometimes you have to pay attention if you're doing decreases or a pattern or something like that right so um knitting is can in many times not be mindless but cross stitch i mean you have to count you have to pay attention to that, but it's just always, it's just, you're just doing X's, you know? So it was just, it's been such a, an easy project to grab and not have to think about like, where am I? Do I, am I turning the heel on the sock or whatever? So I really enjoyed that. But again, not a hundred percent sure what I'm going to do with the finished product. It's super cute. And, um, on the fat quarter shop floss tubes, you know, they show ways that you can frame these things. Um, and that looks cute. And I think I will do like maybe a little, little, maybe I'll frame it and put it in the, um, in my sewing area. But I started Googling, um, like modern cross stitch patterns. Like what, <laughs> cause I'm no shame if it's your deal, but I'm just not into the like real country farm girl patterns like that's just not my thing but I do enjoy doing this so I looked at modern cross stitch patterns there's not a lot there's some things that are kind of abstract I um I have saved on Etsy a William Morris pattern that was just like done in blue 
which is so it's just like kind of a cool print, you know, kind of like looks like William Morris wallpaper or something. So I might I might do that. But before I move on to something like that, the thing the, the project that got me thinking, well, after the granny square, they had sent me another um, cross stitch pattern, you know, like they, they send me things to try out. And it's called um, cut so press i'll put a link in the show notes it's it's an inexpensive cross stitch pattern that is very cute it's got like oh i wish i would have brought it up here it's got you know like an iron and some scissors and probably a sewing machine i can't remember right now and i thought okay and that was the one i was going to start with until i saw the granny square thing and they even have a thread pack um also very inexpensive it's a very inexpensive hobby <laughs> unlike quilting um and so they have a little thread pack a very pretty muted colors um, greens and blues and pinks and a yellow and a gray and I'm just using that thread pack to do the granny square thing I've got some other embroidery floss that I'm adding in as well but that just seemed like a really good entry point so I think I'm gonna do that one next because it would also be very cute in my sewing space and then we'll just figure out where this new new hobby is gonna go but so I'm curious if you cross stitch I really thought I had no interest in it but turns out it's really fun. Also watching Kimberly do her little um, videos on cross stitch, she uses these um, little design boards. So I don't know if you've ever seen the Lori Holt design board. She has a free tutorial. I'll, if I remember, I will link it in the show notes. I just went and bought some foam core. I'm going to make some of these. Um, so Lori Holt has these so easy. It, it, different sizes like an 18 inch a 14 inch and like a seven or eight inch squares um, foam board basically you glue some batting on it and then she has to make it cute by putting some she hot uh, uses a hot glue gun and sew some binding around it which is very cute and so Kimberly kept using these little seven inch ones as a place to set the the embroidery floss that you're not using so you know like a embroidery floss is six strands and you're often pulling off two strands and so you've got this other thing that's not on the skein and she and it just sticks of course everything sticks to batting right and so um, she's got just this little one that she just can keep all the colors she's working with so that and I'm just like I'm losing them they're on the floor or whatever so I'm gonna make some of those I actually sadly need to pull out my my baby lock to part of the way she does the the um, binding she does a little zigzag stitch through it and so my juki doesn't do that so I think that's gonna be my weekend project um, if if I don't get around to doing the granny squares I'll be making some design boards and so like I'd like some that are like 14 inches so you could for instance lay out your blocks for um, the the granny square quilt and just have them stacked up and ready to, to sew so I'm kind of excited about that little side project as well I'll talk about this a little bit more in the homemaking segment at the end, but I think this summer I'm also going to do a big sewing room sort of reorganization. Um, I did one of these, well, I did a big declutter during lockdown when I kind of lost my sewing room and I had to kind of pack it away. So I went through everything, got rid of stuff. And then when I got my sewing room back, I kind of moved part of the stuff back in, but not everything. So I don't know about you, but I kind of have sewing stuff stashed in multiple places around the house. And I forget what I have. It took me forever to find my hot glue gun the other day. <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh, I th I'm going to have to go buy another one. Um, so that's going to be my goal is to pull it all out, go through it again. Like the, I feel like you got to go through things every couple of years. You know, I, I think I got rid of a lot of stuff, but I bet there's a whole lot more I could get rid of and then organize it in a way, remind myself what I have and organize it in a way that I can um, access what I need. And I might, now that the kids are, are moved out, I might repurpose one of the bookshelves that was in the boys room to make a little better of a space in my sewing area so I'm kind of uh, excited about that one of the things that I did um, I know a lot of people use this but when I was at Michael's buying the foam board and whatnot um, I got two 14 by 14 I guess they're really scrapbooking boxes I saw someone saying that this is how they love to store their works in progress um, I a lot of the storage I have in my sewing area is part of it that doesn't work is that it's like a bunch of baskets and there's a lot of matching pairs but but that's it there's only two of one kind and and I like that look but it's not always super efficient so they were half price 
So they were five bucks each and I bought two. Um, and so now my, my Cabin Valley quilt that I'm going to be working on is in one of them. And, um, and I've got all my stuff for my Christmas mystery quilt in one. And if I like this way of um, organizing my works in progress, I don't want like a stacks of plastic boxes everywhere, but I think you know, it was very nice. It's very spacious at 14 inches. Um, you know, most blocks that I work with are, are smaller than that. So um, that'll be one good way because I've just got all these weird trays and, and Ziploc bags and, and this feels a little bit more more organized and they were $10 each and I was like, no, I'm not going to spend $10 each because I'm going to want a few of these. And then as I walked out, I saw that they were 50% off. I'm like, okay, I'm going to give this a go. So looking forward to kind of uh, going through that whole thing and, and feeling organized this summer. And now I'd like to thank Echo Peco for also being a sponsor of the podcast. Echo Peco makes wonderful eco-friendly cutting mats. And if you're like me, you like to keep the chemicals to a minimum in your life, including in your sewing space. So Echo Peco mats are made from polypropylene, which is non-toxic, recyclable, and odorless. In fact, it's the food safe plastic that's in your cupboards right now. So they're PVC free, which is great because PVC, also known as vinyl, has all kinds of damaging effects on the health of both you and the planet. So just avoid that if you can. So the self-healing mats come in three sizes, um, 12 by 18, 18 by 24, and 24 by 36. And I highly recommend getting the biggest side that you can afford for your sewing space. I personally have the 24 by 36 and I love it. You can, you know, cut a... Um, a width of fabric, you know, folded in half right there on the long side of your mat, which I find really important. So they're reversibles and they come in um, three colors, this gorgeous blue, mocha brown and jade green. And there's a light side and a dark side, which if you've never, if you only have like a plain green old fashioned um, cutting mat, you're going to love the fact that you can get some contrast with your fabric and your cutting mat. If you've ever struggled with cutting a dark fabric on a dark cutting mat, you know what I'm talking about. Just flip that sucker over and um, you know you're in business again and what is also wonderful is you can get versions that are both inches and in metric as I mentioned I have the beautiful blue one and I use it all the time and they also have markings for the usual paper sizes um, which is so handy if you do any kind of paper crafting so if you'd like to give one a try use the code she 10 s h e 10 to get a 10 percent discount for simple handmade everyday listeners they come packaged in a special flat box so no bends when you get it and no odor when you open that package i absolutely love it okay let's move on to tv and books so we recently got apple tv we're one of those people that we get on streaming services and get off them <laughs> depending on what we want to watch um I love not having to pay for everything all the time. So we got Apple TV and I've got a couple shows that I want to talk about. The first one is called Severance. This has Adam Scott in it. And if you are a Parks and Rec fan, he's Ben um, from Parks and Rec. He's a, a fabulous actor. And this show explores the idea of what if you, when you went to work, you had no knowledge of your personal life and when you were not at work you had no knowledge of what went on at work so the people in this show um the, a particular company if you work there you have to opt for being severed which sounds like super awful but they put like a sort of like a chip in your head um, and so when you're like going down the elevator to to work you just you go through this transformation where you remember absolutely nothing about your life outside and at first you might think okay that'd be fine like i don't really need to um you know think it'd be great to eat. when you're at home you never think about work right and you are never distracted at work by thinking about home well it's not as good as you might think <laughs> <laughs> and this show totally explores why that would be. And it was very good. Um, I hope there's another season, but I highly recommend it. And he is a fabulous actor. And Christopher Walken's in it. And um, not, not, what's his name? Oh, another famous actor that I can't think of right now. Um, so highly recommend that. And then finally, because we are on Apple TV, we have gotten on the Ted Lasso <laughs> bandwagon which I know I am late on there's two full seasons of that and that show has been a delight we are in um I think the second half of season two right now so we haven't finished it um 
and that's got Jason Sudakis, who is just, or Sudakis, maybe that's how you say it. Um, he is so fun. So he's a, a super crazily optimistic um, American football coach from Kansas, who um, I'm assuming you probably know what Ted Lasso is. Um, but he is uh, chosen to coach a Premier League soccer team in London. And he really knows nothing about how to coach soccer. Um, and it is, he is a delight. It, it's funny. I keep saying as we're watching it, it's, it's in some ways is such a wholesome show because he is so wholesome. But in fact, there, um, there is sex, there are F-bombs everywhere. So it's really not quite, <laughs> it's funny that it leaves me feeling that it's wholesome when in fact there are some things like that. So be warned about that. But it is a, um, it's a very fun story. So definitely recommend that. And um, the other show on um, Apple that will be come up, well, we're kind of watching simultaneously is called Foundation, which is based on the Isaac Asimov sci-fi book called Foundation, which my husband read when he was actually younger, but I think he also reread in the last 10 years or so. And so I knew nothing about it. Um, and I'm not really qualified to explain it very well right now. But if you were a sci-fi fan and didn't know that Foundation, they had turned that into a show, um, that's been fun as well. And the last show I want to mention, I've only watched a couple episodes. When I talked about last time, the Anne Cleves book, um, which one did I talk about? Maybe Telling Tales, which was a Vera Stanhope mystery. Um, someone let me know that that is a show. Now, I know the Anne Cleves Shetland series is a TV show. I've watched that, but I didn't realize that the show called Vera is Vera Stanhope. It is cast so perfectly. So it's just, it's your standard, you know, British mystery. It's, I want to say it's delightful. I've been using that word a lot today. Um, but, you know, it's, you know, mysteries, cozy mysteries, not always delightful so much as entertaining and dark. <laughs> so um, if you have Acorn, um, like season seven is on acorn there's there's many seasons but i only have access to one of them but um so whoever suggested that to me thank you very much i appreciate it now let's move on to books um which i felt like i didn't have as many to talk about as usual so i am listening right now to and i'm not done with it i hate it when i recommend books that i haven't quite finished but um the book is called the house of unexpected sisters and it is by Alexander McCall Smith, who has the number one ladies detective agency series. I read those. I started those years and years ago, maybe when they first came out. I'm not really sure. And I read many of them somewhere along the line. I just stopped reading them. Like my, last time I talked about the V.I. Warshawski books by Sarah Pritzky. I don't know. I lost the plot on it somewhere along the line, probably when I had three small children. Um, so this came up, I was looking for an audio book that was available to download right then. And that came up. I'm like, oh, I'm going to try one of those. I had forgotten how, oh my gosh, I'm, she's going to use the word delightful again, how entertaining <laughs> those books are. Um, the, it's, it, they're so different. So the, this is about a, a women owned detective agency in South Africa. Is that right? Is it South Africa? It's in, no, it's in, oh man, how do I not know this? Hang on. Of course, it takes place in Botswana. So um, it just culturally, things are a little bit different. Um, she does to love to drink her Rubio's tea, which I um, appreciate. But the, the, the narrator does such a great job. But what really struck me in listening to this book is the slow pace of it. Um, the narrator speaks very slowly, the pace of the story, I was realizing like, I am well into the story and kind of nothing has happened. And that sounds like it's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing <laughs> at all, because I'm not a plot driven uh, person when it comes to book, I'm very character driven. So as long as I am sitting in the detective agency with them, drinking tea and gossiping, I am perfectly happy. But I even, you know, I often speed up audiobooks and you could really speed the sucker up and it, <laughs> it still just seemed like somebody normally talking. But so it was a very delightful change of pace. I haven't finished it. I'm going to get back to it. Um, but I just was nice to remember that there's this uh, other series of books that I kind of forgot about. Um, 
the other book that I'm reading is called um, Publishable by Death. So somewhere along the line, I found a list of cozy mysteries, and this was a one that was recommended, and I think it was perhaps if you're inexpensive as Kindle or maybe on Kindle Unlimited. Um, I can't remember who wrote it right now. I'll put it in the show notes. And it's about a woman who opens up a, um, a bookstore in a little kind of touristy town. And on the day of her opening, there's a dead body in her warehouse. And so she should leave it to the police, but of course she's not. And so it's got a kind of a new cast of characters. It's the first one of a series. So we're just kind of trying to get to know people. Um, It's very cozy mystery-ish. It's very easy reading. You know, I'm not um, in love with it, but it is, uh, it's been pleasurable so far. Um, maybe 70% done. So I'm not sure how it's going to pan out. And of course, all these cozy mysteries, they get held to a very high standard because of my deep and abiding love for the Louise Penny Inspector Gamache books, which are not cozy mysteries. They are not, they are not, they should not, they're in a, they're a whole different literary level above that. And, um, so again, when I was trying to find an audiobook to listen to, as if you've been around here for any length of time, you know my complete obsession with these books and how I just listen to them over and over and can never get sick of them. And surprisingly, remember very few details about who killed what. <laughs> like I, I, It's like, oh yeah, I forgot how that worked out. But there was one particular book, I think she's written 17 books. There's one particular one that I have not listened to two and three times because for some reason it's not available at any of my local libraries. So I decided I was going to treat myself to it. So this is what I do. Like I do not have an Audible membership, nor do I think I ever will, um, but... I do have some Audible books through Amazon, but the only way you can usually get them, so I buy the Kindle book. So the Kindle book for, it was the one I'm talking about is called Trick of the Light, which was so fun to listen to because I think I'd only read it once, like maybe eight years ago, and I had very little recollection of it. So I bought the Kindle book, which was on sale. I think I got it for about $8, and then you can add the audible narration for like another $8. So I got the Kindle book and the, the, the um, audiobook, which I now own for like 16 bucks. So you can kind of do that. I can usually get in under 20 bucks for getting both the book and the audiobook. Now, I would I like to own all 17? Yes, that's probably never going to happen. But, um, but that was kind of fun. So I listened to that one and that brought up some parts of the overarching story that go, weaves through the whole series that I that I didn't remember. So I decided to start this project of starting at the beginning and going through the whole thing, mostly for an ear to just um, see how the um, the, the, the main, the, not the mystery of the book, but the, there's a storyline that carries through how that pans out. So that has been fun. It has also made me think that what I would like to do is um, on some other re-listen is write down every time she mentions some kind of food that they're serving at the bistro there I would like to make a master list of all these foods and then go find the recipes everything always sounds so good you know what like it's just you know even simple things like a a tomato basil and brie on a baguette or a you know quinoa date salad like just and I'm just like there is a cookbook waiting to happen a three pines inspired cookbook and maybe that will be my next career. I'm not really sure. So um, so that is what I've been listening to. Oh, and the other book that I got is called, um, why am I so unprepared here? I was going to bring the book in. It's called Survival Mom. And what this book is, is, is about getting, being prepared for emergencies. And ever since, you know, the pandemic, um, I've realized, I found some of the holes in our preparedness. Um, we, we've got some stuff, but I just knew we could be better. And this book, um, in many ways, has uh, has chapters that are way beyond, you know, I'm not going to be storing food in, in mylar bags. And, you know, there, there's a whole level that I'm not going to get into, but it, it's helping me up my game um, in terms of the, um, the, our outdoor pantry, you know, so now um, I keep a much deeper pantry than I used to, um, you know, where I, where, you know, I used to keep two cans of something. Now I've got eight kind of a thing. I'd kind of like to really learn to only, um, you know, to really shop that pantry and only do a big grocery shop once or twice a month, but I, I haven't quite gotten there. So, um, you know, things like, you know, rice and flour and canned goods. I've, um, we've got a lot of water stored. Um, 
and, and actually I learned, so we've got these big five gallon um, things. We have five of them for storing water. And what I realized is that um, you want to have a lot of um, water that's easier to get to. So we, I have a bunch of quart mason jars. I got a double order one time. I filled them all up with water and just put them in the fridge. And so that way, if you lose power, or you lose water or whatever, um, you can save the really big, um, more awkward to use five gallon storage for things for things like cooking or, or or laundry or something like that and have more accessible drinking water so anyways um also i learned um i i finally went to the bank and got a whole bunch of cash and small bills um under the idea that if something happens and um you know because here we have earthquakes and we have wildfires so there are definitely ways that we could um, lose power for longer periods of time so if you were trying to you know like trade with your neighbor or barter or buy something you don't want to just have like twenty dollar bills because you like say you just need something that would be three dollars and all you've got is a 20 what are you going to do you're going to give them the 20 um so i've got like a hundred dollars and ones and you know like just a bunch of smaller bills like that um just to have on hand um in, in case we we need something like that so um that's been you know kind of a, a fun little side project to just feel like we are in in a better situation um i'm not going to become a full prepper but i'm just going to be a partial prepper and thank you for all the book suggestions. I love it when you guys email me with book suggestions and I always do absolutely go and put them on my Goodreads list or I'm a little unorganized with my to be read list. Sometimes I put them on an Amazon shopping list, but I love it when you guys um, suggest those things. Before we move on to our last segment, I'd like to take a moment to thank Silk and Sonder for sponsoring the podcast. Silk and Sonder is a monthly journal subscription and I love it. Each month you receive a new journal and it's printed on beautiful paper, beautiful colors. It's a really nice size and every month has a theme. June's theme is spontaneity and there are all sorts of journaling prompts inside to help you explore the theme for that month. There's also a recipe and a coloring page and many types of trackers, sleep trackers, habit trackers, which you can repurpose to be whatever kind of tracker you want it to be. And what I especially love about the Silk and Sonder journal is that there are elements that are the same from month to month. So it's not, you know, like a brand new thing every month. Some pages, um, I had a friend who said they feel like old friends and I love that expression. So the, the monthly layouts, the weekly layouts, the daily layouts, the to-do lists, all those sorts of things, they are the same each month. So you can figure out how you want to to use the different sections and you can use them the way they want with your you know your top three to-dos for the list, your top three goals for the list. You can use um, a section for menu planning or you can use it to um, track your exercise or your spending. You can use it all different ways. So you've got your consistency of those pages and then you have the, um, the new journal prompts every single month and lots of um, empty pages with, that are with, they're actually graphs which I love writing on graph paper um, to do your own freeform journaling to use it in any way that you want and right now Silk and Sonder is launching um, some digital like classes some workshops that I wanted to share with you um, one is called the Core Values Digital Workshop, and the other one is a journaling, ask me anything type um, digital workshop if, if you have questions about journaling. So through the core value ones, um, they just walk you through how your personal core values and what they are, how they matter, how you discover yours, and as it's just a way to get you going on your self-discovery journey. And then again, the journaling, ask me anything, you know, just helps you figure out how you want to dive into journaling. So those are classes that are available and I have a $5 off um, link for you. If you're interested in registering for those, go to the um, the show notes and click through and you'll get your, your $5 off. And if you just want to try the um, Silk and Sonder journal any, in any way, um, I've got a discount code for you. It's a she15, S-H-E-15, and it gets you 15% off um, any journaling subscription. So I highly recommend it. The summer might be the perfect time for you to dive into um, doing some journaling and some self-discovery to figure out how you want to proceed once we get to September. Well, that unintentionally flows right into the, the last segment I want to talk about, which is kind of making a plan for your summer. 
So I like to think of summer as just, you know, this this little season that I could just put in a box. <laughs> it feels different than other seasons of the year. And I um, am past the point of having, I mean, I guess I have a kid in college who's coming home for college, who is home for college. So there is that summer thing. But my job and my routines do not, you know, really change from season to season. But I like to think about summer as this little, little um, time period I can put in a box and think, what do I want to make of this summer? What are my goals for this summer? What can, when we get to September, what can I look back on and go, that's what I did last summer. Like I I achieved this little thing. So some things you, you know, even if it's not something you want to do is like, how do you want to feel? Um, Do you want to feel, you know, rested and refreshed at the end of the summer and maybe you don't have big goals maybe your goal is to scale everything back and really just enjoy the the laid backness of the season so it's completely up to you how you want to feel um so some some ideas though you know do you want your house do you want to come out of summer feeling um, less cluttered i know that in the fall and winter I want to feel cozy, which to me means more. And in summer, I want less. I want the space so that I feel cool <laughs> and like not so hot. Um, so there is there a decluttering project that you want to do? Um, is there something that you have been putting off for a long time that you can just go, um, I want to finish that project. For me, I think that, that what's going to get done this summer is finally is our master bathroom project, which is finally underway. I've got the demolition scheduled. The The vanity is sitting in the garage. Um, I've made, I've ordered the tile. I know what color I'm going to paint. Um, there are still lots of decisions to, I, I need knobs in the sink and the faucet and things like that. But um, we are finally on our way for that. So I'm excited about that. Um, so maybe it's a project. Um, maybe it's a new exercise routine. Like let's do something a little like I also am hoping to really establish, I talk about this forever, but this summer I'm really going to do it as a solid strength training routine. Um, I personally want to feel like I I'm spending my time well. That's always an obsession with me. And it's usually when I've been on social media too much that I start to think about how I I sometimes just think, what are you doing? Like you could be doing so many other things. You were wasting time. You were too old to waste time. (laughs) And I don't mind, um, you know, like wasting time by reading or just like, you know, sitting outside. But social media, too much of it is is a waste of time for me. Um, So I want to use my time well. I want to spend time being outside. I want to make sure we take advantage of going to the beach. And I don't even mean like laying out at the beach or going in the water, just going down there and walking on the sand and enjoying the beach. Um, I want to limit my social media, things like that. So it's different for for everybody. But personally, for me, I'm, you know, I want to uh, limit my social media. I want to knock out the bathroom renovation as much as it's in my control. I'd like to do... A, um, the, and I talked about this earlier, the, the sewing room reorganization. So those things that the bathroom was done and the sewing room was reorganized, um, I think I would feel really, really good about that. Um, as always, I'd like to, to come out, you know, of summer 10 pounds thinner. And, you know, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Um, I am continuing to, I, that was one of my top goals of this year is to finally get the weight off and, and keep it off. And I'm not there yet, but I am um, making some progress. So I'm excited about that. So with this idea, if you wanted to mentally think of something like, what do I want to accomplish this summer? So whatever that is, um, let's break that down and do a 10 day challenge where you practice doing that thing. So um, if you've been around for a while, we've done a number of 10 day challenges and we had some, uh, an influx of people after the Pat Sloan um, blog hop uh, book tour thing. And some people jumped in on um, some older posts for 10 day challenges. And I apologize if you were one of those people. So I thought, let's do another one. So I think the last one I did is I wanted to actually just track my food because I'm always trying to lose weight. And um, and that really helped me. It, it actually was enlightening. I've already been tracking my, my food. Um, I think back then I was using the Weight Watchers app. Now I'm using an app called Healthy, H like H-E-A-L-T-H-I. 
did I spell that right? Healthy, but with an I instead of a Y. Um, and it is a straight up Weight Watchers knockoff um, app and it works for me and it's free. <laughs> so um, if it's, you know, drink more water, if it's um, coming up with an exercise plan, um, plugging away at a decluttering project, um, you know, each day, whatever um, it is that you would like to do more of this summer, taking time to sit outside and read for 10 minutes a day, you get to pick. So um, let's do a 10 day project. I am going to start it on June 20th and we'll run it through the end of the month till June 30th, which is that technically an 11 day um, challenge. Yes, in fact, it is. I'm just realizing. <laughs> whatever, I'm going to start it on the 20th. Um, and so to participate, um, you know, it's very low key. I will put up a post in the um, Simple Handmade Everyday private Facebook group, which um, is different from the Simple, Handma Simple Handmade Everyday page. So this is a private Facebook group. I'll put a link in the show notes. You um, have to ask to be admitted. That's just so that I can keep you know, the, any kind of uh, the trolls out and it has happened. Um, and there'll be a post and that to each day and just, just, it's like a check-in, just like, what, what are you going to do? Maybe I'll do one where we declare our intentions. And then one, um, that's what I'll do on the 20th. We'll declare our intentions. And then on the 21st, we will start having our check-ins. I'm making this up as we go right now. Um, but I think that'll be fun. And that will help us kind of get into the spirit before we even get to July, where we can figure out what we really want to do with this summer. All right. Before we get out of here, I wanted to thank you um, to Mrs. PD21 for leaving a very wonderful review on iTunes. Um, I just, I love it when people say that the podcast is like just sitting down and having a chat with a friend because that is exactly what I want. As always, thank you for spending this time with me. I hope that you have a wonderful week. You can find me online at my blog, Simple Handmade Every Day on Instagram as Kristen Esser. And again, consider joining the Simple Handmade Every Day private Facebook group so that we can keep the conversation going.